Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Half Hour of Power. I am Joe. Brandon is here. <coughs> Yo, Joe, what do you know? Jack, me. Oh. How's it going, Brandon? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That was my impression of Dracula choking me. But what, what about you know? <laughs> that was your impression of Dracula drinking anything other than blood? How about that? Yeah, I was drinking holy water. There you go. Oh, well, I don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> but what okay. do you know, Joe? What do you know? <laughs> I know uh, one thing that we are going to talk about the 1958. Hammer version of Dracula, the horror of Dracula. Oh, now that one of course stars the immortal, and uh, in a true sense, true definition of the word, iconic Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, the two iconic people. So, if any of you out there want to know how to use the word iconic, it's Christopher Lee is iconic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's Peter Cushing is iconic. So you can't go around saying everything is iconic when these is these are the only two iconic things in the world. So that is true. <laughs> and uh, I stand by my story. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, we had a lot of fun talking about the 1931 Universal Dracula picture. So we thought the next one we should do is let's go straight up to the Hammer movie. And there is one in between this that we're going to try to do if we can find it. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find it. I won't say too much about it right now. But you know what I'm talking about. So that's what's important. (laughs) Um. So uh, we will go straight to the Rotten Tomatoes uh, and see what it says. So what do you think the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes is for The Horror of Dracula? The critic score for Horror of Dracula? I'm going to say 80, 86. I'm going to say 86. Because that, oh. that, that was a good, I mean, come on, you got the iconic Christopher Lee. You got iconic Peter Cushing. There you go. That is correct. They are iconic. Okay, so uh, you are really, really close with this score as well. Ninety percent. Oh, I'm getting good. I'm getting good. You are. You are. Uh, so, what about the audience score? Uh, audience score, I say a seventy. Okay, you're kind of close. Eighty-one uh, percent. Yay! Oh, not really. I ain't really too much to celebrate. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is really interesting to me. So, do you remember what the scores were for the 31 Dracula? Um, I want to say the credit score was like, what, 94? Yeah, that's right. Good memory. And the uh, audience score was like 80 something? That's right. 82. So, this version we're talking about today got 90 and 81. So it really, really, they're really close to each other. Yeah. And that's a big old gap in years. Yeah. I mean, really close to each other. So that's, that's fun. <laughs> it is. Um, so here we go. Now this one, of course, this is the hammer version. And if uh, you are listening to this and you don't know, Anything about Hammer, well, you need to go watch some Hammer movies. Start with this one. Basically, basically, Hammer uh, is a British studio that ended up making a bunch of gothic horror movies. Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Wolfman. They made all of those things in the same vein as... uh, Universal. So that's basic. And I know there's somebody out there going, no, you missed this part about it. You idiot. <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Yeah. You, you missed a part. I know I did. What is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did. So, but anyway, I was just, just very basic. 
without getting into too many tangents, <laughs> as we have been known to do. Very basic. There you go. So this came out in 1958. And this was directed by, do you know the director? There you go. There's some trivia for you. I had the Sullivan name. That's right. You did just see this name, and you're right. It's Terrence Fisher. Yay! See, I was, I was close. You did that one right. That, that's a good one. So he is probably one of the best known Hammer directors. Uh, oh, he because, directed. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he made the Frankenstein movie, The Curse of Frankenstein, which came out in 1957. I mean, he made. Uh, this Dracula, he made the Hound of the Baskervilles, he made the Mummy, he made the Revenge of Frankenstein, he made the, you know, he made a whole bunch of these. Yeah, didn't he do like the Taste of Dracula or something like that? He did. I'm not sure that he did that one. Let me see. Taste the Blood of Dracula? I don't think he directed that one. I know he did it like uh, three of those Dracula. Movies. He directed Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Yeah, that one. Six, 66. The Brides of Dracula came out 60. That might be... That they, might be. Well, well, I mean, yeah. So he just... He did a whole bunch. The Devil's Rides Out, which is an amazing movie with... Peter that's Peter right. Peter. With Christopher Lee. That's right. Peter and written by the iconic... That's right, Brandon Richard Matheson. <laughs> Based on the novel, not a Richard Matheson novel, but the screenplay is Richard written by Richard Matheson. So there you go. You want to see that movie? That's that's a lot of great movies there. I've never seen that. He has done. Seen You've not seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, well, we should have to remedy that. Yeah. Because you, you just made it sound like it was really, really awesome. So I got to watch it now. It is really awesome. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Uh, so now, uh, anyway, Jimmy Sankster wrote the script for this. And since we were, I was talking about a book I had that I hadn't read. Guess what I have, Brandon? What, you have the book? I have a book by a memoir written by Jimmy Sankster that oh, I have read. Oh, so, oh, so you read that one. I read that book. That's one of the books that distracted me from the Todd Browning book. So he wrote this book. It is called Do You Want It Good or Tuesday? So oh, that's a, it's really good. Really? Uh, it, is, yeah, it is about From Hammer Films to Hollywood, A Life in Movies. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting read, especially if you're really interested in the Hammer movie. I mean, here's one of the guys that wrote a bunch of the Hammer movies. So, yeah, Jimmy Sankster. Yeah. Uh, so now you're going, well, what else did he write? Well, I mean, he wrote a bunch of the Hammer movies, so I don't know what else you need. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's out there going, well, what did he write? I, he's got to prove himself to me. Well, I, I don't even know what to say to you, but <laughs> so there you go. He wrote a bunch of the Hammer movies. That's enough for me, all, right? So all let's get it. Movies. What's that? <laughs> all the iconic movies <laughs> that's right all of those movies with all those iconic actors in it there's only yeah only a handful really i know we want those to be this too forever but yeah so but anyway um this one is not based on the stage play like the last one was but but we were talking about the reasons that one was based on the stage play. Um, this one had uh, also massive budget constraints. So they tightened the story up and set it in like two places. You, did you notice that? Yes. So, yeah, there's no, no boat travel in it. The Demeter is not in it. Uh, the only traveling is on uh, carriage. Mm -hmm. um, all of it's condensed. There's characters missing, of course, like there always are. But 
you know, you start reading about this stuff and go, why didn't they do this? Why did they do that? Really, a lot of it comes down to they just didn't have the money. So, well, I, you know, it's, well, here's a little bit of argument on that. Yes, yeah, true. They didn't have the money, but they did switch a lot of the characters around and it was kind of switched a little bit of the story around, too. They did, but you know they're all uh, the the vamp the team of vampire hunters in the book. I mean, uh, I know you haven't gotten this far yet, but you got Van Helsing, mm-hmm. Quincy Morris, Arthur Holmwood, Jonathan Harker, and then Mina Harker. That's five. Wait, Mina Harker was one of the vampire hunters. Absolutely, I didn't know that. That's right. You didn't know that <laughs> because none of the movies make it that way. And you're just now going through the book. So, well, okay. How so, could you know that? You, you know what I mean? How could, how could you know that she was one of the vampire? Well, well it's funny you know? that you say that, which is, which is kind of crazy in this movie. Um, so Jonathan actually did. He actually was a vampire hunter because they, it kind of leads to that in uh, kind of. The- That's right. You, the as you and I were talking a little bit earlier, um, Jonathan is going there not as a solicitor. Mm-hmm. He's going there to be a librarian. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be your librarian today, which is a cover for. He is working with Van, Van Helsing. Helsing. Yeah to discover if Dracula is this vampire they're looking for. Mm-hmm. So he's running around the castle doing stuff and looking for clues. Um, uh, how many brides does Dracula have in this movie, Brandon? He has one. That's right. He has one. <laughs> one. One bride. So, I mean, there you go. You got... They didn't have to pay two other actresses to be brides. And I, th- I always thought that was kind of neat what they did with that because she's he does she goes and presents herself as a prisoner and how evil and mean Dracula is. And Dracula is very nice to him, of course, like he always is in the beginning, and he can't he doesn't know if he should trust her until what happens, Brandon. Until she tried to. Well, she didn't try. She did. Till she bit his neck. She, she bit his neck. She bit his neck. And and to be honest, I kind of fell for it too. I'm not gonna lie, because I was yeah. Thinking, oh, she really needs to get out. <laughs> oh yeah. So, I mean, okay. So I mean, how how uh, you revealed a uh, secret last show. So do you do you have another uh, secret to reveal on this show? Uh, I do. This is the first time you've seen this movie, isn't it? Actually, okay. So, okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> let, let me say this. Let me say this in your defense, okay? There are. Let me see. I have this. The list drawn up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Dracula pictures in the Hammer Dracula series. Christopher Lee played Dracula in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. Oh, he's seven? I thought it was only six. Yeah. So he, he played Dracula in seven of those. All right. So you could have seen any one of those and well, almost, you know, thought you were watching that one. Not, uh, not the did, but but you get the point, right? Right. Well, what happened was, see, this is how I didn't I didn't know. So there's two versions. So you have the British version, which is the horrors of Dracula, and then you have yes. the version, which is this Dracula. Yes. So yeah, that's that's exactly right. They they did retitle it, yeah, uh, Horror of Dracula, so that they would avoid confusion with the 1931. Um. Dracula. Version yeah. since at that time, even in 1958, the 1931 version was still being booked to play in theaters because you know why, right, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> it was the most awesome movie in the world. Well, that's part of it, but there wasn't 
television as we know it today. There wasn't cable television. There wasn't streaming. Uh, believe it or not, if you wanted to see a movie that you liked you in 1958, that. you most likely had to go to a movie theater to see it. And most likely it was the B-movie theater. Well, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> I, I just learned that it was like different type of theaters. Like, you have your horror theaters and you have your other type of theater. I'm just like, you're, yeah, you, you, are, uh, you are right. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, so... Uh, if this is the first time you've seen it, I, I, mean, I could totally see why. Uh, as I said uh, in the last show... One of the things that really drew me into uh, horror is the uh, gothic universal horror movies. And then so a natural next step is the Hammer movies, uh -huh. uh, which are very similar, but they're in color and they have lots of blood. Yeah, they're more that's, that's really a big difference. I mean, they got a lot of blood. Uh, Christopher Lee is showing his fangs everywhere. There's blood uh, everywhere. Blood everywhere. Um, you also have low cut dresses. <laughs> oh, it's a little so bit, a little good. bit more, more sensual, a little bit more in that way. With that, that really isn't shown in the thirty-one movie. That type of uh, stuff in the thirty-one movie. So there's a little bit. They did a little bit different, a little bit different take on that. Uh, so, uh, what? How the heck does Harker get out of the castle? You know, let's go back to the movie a bit after that. I get out of the castle. Yeah, what happens? Does he get out of the castle in this version? What happens? Oh, no, he don't get out of the castle. What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he don't get out of the castle? He don't make it to England. Oh my gosh! What happens to him? Well, he got turned into a vampire. He did. He did. That's right. And Van Helsing, being the great friend that he is, he put him out of his misery. <laughs> um, what? How did he do that? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. He drove a stake to his heart. <laughs> That's right. With gusto, right? Well, it's funny. Is it's really funny because they didn't show that. Yep. They. He picked up the hammer and stake, and they looked over, and then he will sit on the couch. Yep. <laughs> um. <yeah. laughs> now, there's something else uh, in this movie. Who? Somebody in here that we would recognize if we are fans of the 1989 Batman movie. Who? Who is that? Oh, um, oh, what is your name? Oh. I know you That's right. That's right. Michael Gaw, he's in this. Thank you. And he is uh, known as playing Alfred in the first four Batman movies from 89 up until, was there one in 97? Was it... Does that movie count? Isn't that the one with George Clooney? Does that count? I guess that counts because he did play Alfred in that one also. Oh, it was really short. I remember he was dying. That's right. He died in that. Well, he didn't die in this movie, did he? Hey, no, he didn't die in that one. I said he was dying. So, well, he didn't die in this Dracula movie, though, did he? No. No, <laughs> no he didn't die. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So, uh, all right. So Which he ironic, plays. That is ironic that he played in a Dracula movie, didn't he play in as a bowler to a guy who dresses like a bat? Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Um, I wonder if that. I mean, Tim Burton being a big fan of these movies, that probably wasn't lost on him. <laughs> I mean, he was a big Vincent Price fan, so. Yeah, and Vincent Price was also in a bunch of the gothic movies that. I uh, jumped to uh, the uh, Roger Corman Poe cycle of movies. Mm. You remember those, right? I do. And we're going to have to do those too now. See what you've done? Oh, the well, ball. this topic. <laughs> yeah. That set in the hammer were event, uh, were, uh, I'm going to get it out, 
where Dracula lives. That same set, the interior set, looks like the same interior set of the Raven, Vincent Price, the Raven. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll have to find out if they're they are the. I I don't think that they are. I'm. I could see they they can't be the same set. I don't think they are, but they do look very similar. Very very. Similar. And that really would be interesting to find out if that's actually what happened. Um. But anyway, uh, Michael Gaw plays Arthur Holmwood mm-hmm. in this movie, and as we know. Uh, so uh, Mina is married to Arthur Holmwood. <laughs> That's the confusion part. Yeah, and uh, there is also uh, Lucy Holmwood, and she was. Let's see. Kind of- this is the movie that does not feature Renfield, correct? Right. That's right. Because right. that always kind of. It kind of threw me off a little bit, but at the same time, you have Peter Cushing as Van Helsing, and he's so good. Now, so good. that's another thing, as we talked a bit about on the last show, that they don't do Van Helsing right. No, but um, Peter, Cushing. Peter Cushing is a fantastic Van Helsing yes, in what is. he's doing, but he's not. Again, he's not the Van Helsing from the book. No, but he's still an awesome Van Helsing. He's still, yeah, he still is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's funny because here's, you know, they had to combine all these characters and and uh, you got Lucy Homewood, Mina Homewood, as we are going on about... Um, and you have Van Helsing who knows everything about <laughs> not he doesn't know everything about vampires. He's still kind of experimenting. That's still kind of neat because he experiments in the book. He doesn't know everything. Well, yeah, he's, cause... he's trying to figure stuff out. Uh, Van Helsing in the book, but most of the time in the movies, Van Helsing is presented as the expert on vampires. When in the book, he is not an expert on vampires. Well, they kind of did portray that in in this movie too because he said that. Uh, the rumors of, oh, is this a rumor that they turn into bats and turn yeah, into yeah, he did say world. yeah, and that I was interesting know. how they put yeah, that in the movie and they said that yeah he can't do that so in this uh, that helps the budget quite a bit doesn't it oh yeah oh yeah it does. Ab- absolutely so how what what happens how they dracula I, I mean the basic dracula is there you know the basic plot from the book is there dracula leaves his castle goes to uh, what is the fictional british not british town it's a fictional german town he goes to right right uh, it's vasting i think that's what it's called i think it was like v-a-s-t something um, but where he's at is not far. Well, no. You know, uh, Carl Stott, right? It was in, yeah. I just noticed it was in Germany. But then it said, yeah, it was, yeah. I'm so confused now. How'd you say that? It, it does get that way, yeah. Because his castle is near Klausenberg, which is a fictional town. Yeah, right. right. And uh, I mean, this I've probably seen this one and the 31 version of Dracula the most. (laughs) (laughs) I've probably seen these two the most. And uh, this is probably the less I've probably seen this one the least of the Christopher Lee movies. My favorite one of his is uh, Dracula Prince of Darkness, the second one. That, yeah, I was going to say that. The second one that he's in, I should say. He don't talk. Say. And, uh, yeah, he does not talk. He has very few lines in this movie, and it's because that's what he wanted, if I remember right. Uh, he Okay, so I did, did go. Be, okay, so he didn't talk because he didn't like the script. 
He said that the writers will write the story, but then they add Dracula in at the last. Yeah. So he didn't. He just said, "Forget it." He's not talking. He may say some one-liners, but he's not really talking. Like he'll improvise, and then that's it. So that's why he's mostly like in this movie. He talked in the beginning, and then in the second half of the movie, he didn't talk at all. Yeah, that's right. He does not at all. Um, he's very. Okay, so we talked about uh, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. What about Christopher Lee? Christopher Lee was a great Dracula. Because he has that body stature. He's tall. That's one. So he's like tiring over people like that. And does his his look. Like, I won't fuck with him. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I would not. He's got the, the devil air look, but it's like him and James Bond with the man with the golden gun. I would not mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, He's like, welcome to my castle. This is now. I'm like, oh, you be my librarian. I'm like, mm, something's behind you because you just too nice and your face just so scary. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he looks the part. Mm -hmm. You read the book and he describes Dracula in the book. It to me, it always was like he's describing Christopher Lee. Um, and it always made me wonder, what would a Dracula movie be like if they were actually telling the book and had a not that Sankster did a bad job on the script. He did he did what he could do with the budget they had, and that's that's why he wrote it that way. But you know, let's say Christopher Lee is Dracula in the Coppola movie. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How is that? That'd be that that'd be ooh. that would that would ooh. I mean, you give him that. Well, that's what he wanted. I mean, he he read these books when he did. He didn't just take these parts. He he oh, yeah, read yeah. this book. I mean, even even Bela Lugosi read the book. Yeah, he um, Christopher Lee, like he he read that book more than just once. So he knew the book, and when they offered him that part, and you know, he was ecstatic. But like he said, it was certain parts in there that he's like he just wasn't going to speak because you know it wasn't like following the book but... yeah and, and i think i think what you're talking about and referring to is in the later movies because he really got mm -hmm. upset with these movies yes um, little... yeah because uh, the first one i mean it actually is pretty it's it's a pretty good movie if you're looking for it to really follow the book it's it doesn't do that the basic no. bones of the book are there I but know. um it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm saying the very, very basic bones of the book are there where somebody goes to Dracula's castle, Dracula travels away, tries to uh, take over, influence the town, uh, tries to take the person's loved ones, and then he gets defeated. I mean, that's really that's really the basic thing. You ever notice it's in like Dracula, you know, it's funny. When every time, you know, the person that comes in the castle, oh, this is your your fiance. Huh. Yeah. Like what make you Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't understand that. That was odd. <laughs> like, why you just go after her? Like there's there's plenty of women, but you just wanna her. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. See in the book it's not like that at all. Oh really? <laughs> no, he is not he is not going after those chicks because he thinks they're hot or, you know, any, they remind him of somebody he knew when he was alive. He goes after Mina because they went and messed with Dracula. That's why he went after Mina. Mm, see? see, I think Lucy, it was just kind of a, she was there. Yeah. Because he just, she was there and she took a lot of, Mina and Lucy took a lot of midnight walks in evening walks in the book <laughs> and they walked around in a certain spot and Dracula, that's where he happened to be. And Mina slept walk. So 
Mm. Not mean. I'm sorry, Lucy. So I mean, she was easy to get, and then Dracula knew who went after him, and uh, yeah, then he he goes, "Oh, you guys are gonna come and mess with me? Well, check this out." Then he went to get Mina. He didn't go get Mina because he thought whatever they put in the movie. <laughs> I guess that works in the movie, but I really like how it they did it in the book. And if you put that in the movie, that would really be bold because they never put that in a movie. It, and actually, it's a simple, simple thing. Actually, you, you, because I mean, like I said, I'm only on chapter three, and you know, I'm still getting, you know, him you know, still writing a diary and in the castle and stuff and you know and what's Dracula's doing to him and stuff like that. But see, if I would have got further than that, that that's a big eye opener. I don't understand how some directors haven't done that. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, that's really weird. Cause that's not like a great story. Like I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, so I mean you go through it. It's always amazed me. I go read the book. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish they'd make this a movie. But in order to get that movie, you have to watch so many Dracula movies. You go, oh, I've watched like seven Dracula movies. I finally read the book. <laughs> Except Van Helsing is never right. Hmm. They've never done him right. Uh, and we're on a tangent again. <laughs> always do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's fun because we're talking about Dracula. Uh, so, All right. Well, I mean, but anyway, Van Helsing goes to Drac. Right, he goes to Dracula's castle and finds that Harker is a, uh, uh, like you said, he's turned into a vampire. What's he do? Stakes him straight out. That's right. He stakes him. Didn't wake him up. Didn't tell him. Yeah. So uh, now I'm. I'm uh, not remembering this part. Oh, what? <sighs> is I... is Harker going to marry Lucy, or is Harker going to marry Mina? No. Okay. So this is what I was talking about. So they had switched it. So uh, Jonathan was supposed to marry Lucy. Okay, that's what Lucy, I thought. Yeah, Lucy. Uh, the. Yeah, she's supposed to marry John and vice versa. So they did it like a big role reversal, technically. So Mina was married to Arthur? Yes. And is Lucy Mina's sister? No, she is Arthur's sister. Arthur's sister, okay. She is Mina's sister-in-law. That's very, okay, very good. Yeah. See, this is what happens. You're trying to keep all the characters straight from this movie and that movie and the book. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I th I thought the scenes where they were trying to save uh, Lucy, I thought those were interesting because you know they're putting the um, garlic around her neck and they're trying to figure out what is wrong with her and why is she losing. And then uh, Lucy, 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 she's and forgive my words, she's a whore. Yeah, she because it was crazy. Yeah, she sick. She, they like she is so sick. She is sick. We yeah. don't know why. So when Helsing, you know, she opens up the door. Here comes Christopher Lee, and he's been sucking on her for a minute. And yep. you're like, okay. <laughs> and she she's enjoying it. She like sat there and was like ready for it. And then Van Helsing finds out, like, like, put this garlic flowers here and, you know, keep the door shut. And then the the maid lady, I can't breathe. Take these away. Yes. Don't care what they say. And then she opens the door and then uh, she's dead. That's right. That's but exactly this, right. So she, she was under, uh, I mean, well, I mean, you kind of bring up a good uh, point. Was she a whore or was she under Dracula's power, under his spell? I really doubt she was under his power. Okay. So I suppose if you want to think that she's a whore, you can think that. Well, I mean, let's play this. She, okay, like Bill Lugosi, you can tell 
that they under his power. Her? No. Oh, you, oh, okay. So you were <laughs> you were saying that that was not played up as well in this one. Is that yeah. right? But she just did it. She's like, she she waited. Oh yes, he's dead. I already know. I'm like what the hell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. How so, know? but anyway, anyway, the other thing I thought was cool is when they go to try to track down uh, Dracula's coffin when uh, Arthur and Van Helsing are trying to. That was good. That was that to was find good. that. That that was pretty neat because there there are and you and again you haven't gotten here yet but there are scenes in the book where they're trying to track down all the earth boxes. Oh wow, it's more than just three. Yeah, because as you know in the book he's well I don't know if you've gotten that far yet to uh, the number of earth boxes Dracula sends to London is like fifty. Oh wow. Yeah, so I mean, in the book, there's a whole big deal about them trying to figure out where he put all the earth boxes. Oh, wow. And they go to those earth boxes and they uh, put the sacred host in there. And uh, I believe they sprinkle holy water on it also. So when Dracula gets back there and opens the lid, he's like, oh, he can't go in there. Oh, in his ground wait. anymore. So that's um, why why uh, Helsing put that cross in his coffin with the dirt in it. Yes, so he defiled his. He can't rest there anymore. He has to go to the castle. So they made it so he that's where he has to go. Oh wow! Um, so that's why they chase him down there. Now the end scene where Van Helsing and Dracula finally uh, duke it out. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, that is amazing. That was that was that was so awesome. I definitely wear housing fake like he was out. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that, that was so it's so good. Where it's like the sun is up. I got to get the so he run, he he freaking runs across the table, leaps up onto the curtain, rips them down, and the yeah. sunlight hits Dracula in. Where does it hit him first? In his leg? Yeah, it hits his foot. So he's a cripple now because he's got an ash for a leg. And that is so good the way that's played out. And then he, is Van that. Helsing is like, all right, the sunlight took out your leg. Well, guess what I'm going to do to your face? Yeah, what do you yeah. do then? So he, he uh, so uh, Dracula tried to escape and Helsing grabbed two candlesticks and made a cross. And which back Dracula up and further further into the sun, and his face started to decay, and he started to peel his face off. The only thing he saw was golden eyes and fangs. That was yeah. So, so I mean, that, what what do you think about that effect? That was awesome. I think that effect looked really good. It and did. I think it still holds up today. Oh, so another fun fact about that. So they edit that out. So there's like seven scenes missing from the decay. Ah, very good. And they did find it. In, well, somebody in Japan found it. And they're trying to get the rights to add it to it to show the more of the decay because they said it was too gruesome. But <laughs> I'm like, does that part alone is not gruesome? <laughs> <laughs> Like when Hammer did that, that scene so good. Like that, that that was really that was really good. That's like the scene in um um uh the, was it the Seven Golden Vampires? Was it the one? Oh yeah, yeah. We did a show. On did. That. Yes, we did. Absolutely. Um. Now. Let me see. I'm trying to find this other bit here. I probably won't be able to, but uh, there is uh, the ending. So we got all of that bit. Now, there was a statue, and I remember thinking this when I watched it here most recently. There's a statue in view that looks like the statue of Pazuzu from The Exorcist. Uh, do you remember that? No. So I remember seeing that. Now, that is like right in it's in the beginning when harker meets dracula 
Really? Yeah, so I remember looking at that going, I don't know if I ever noticed that before. Wow. So, I mean, this movie was 1958. Um, yeah. So, I wonder if I type that in. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, I will watch the movie again, yeah, I, I absolutely, and uh, I'll probably notice it again. But I wonder if I can find a still um, that someone, since everybody's eagle-eyed about other things and other things. Let's see. What do you think? Am I going to find it or not? No, probably not. Let's see. Nope. It just, I, you know what? I, you can buy a little uh, Pazuzu statue and put in your house. I don't. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that either. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to look at the movie again, which I will gladly do. <laughs> but on my first simple search, I don't find it. So I don't find a still of it. Oh, well, of that scene, you know, so maybe not searching for it and just looking at pictures from <laughs> from the movie would be the way to go on that. Uh, anyway, uh, we have covered quite a bit on this. Hell yeah. And this one. So uh, we'll talk about this all through it. And I think I'll ask you at the end, okay. at the end of this journey, because we've got quite a few more Dracula movies to watch. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I will ask you, what is your dream cast for a Dracula movie? You're making it. And what is your dream cast? Oh, so we did this. Um, Jeremy, Jesse and I did this. And mine was Christopher Lee is Dracula. Peter Cushing is Van Helsing and Dwight Fry is Renfield. Those are the three I remember. I'll have to look at the show again and see the others. Cause, I mean, most of the others are most other competent actors could do those. Mm, yeah. But I think I, I picked up, I think I did pick we did. I think we did pick all the main parts when we did it. So I'd have to, we'll, we'll do that again here at the end. So keep that in mind as we uh, go through this journey. <laughs> Who is your picks? Um, uh, do you have any final thoughts on this? Uh, this being the first time you've seen this one. Yeah. Final thoughts on this one. Um, even though it's a Dracula movie, it, it, to me, it was a totally different Dracula movie. Because it literally pulled me in. And I was kind of like, want to know what was going to happen next on, in every scene. Um, so I really did enjoy it. I really liked the movie. Even though, it it. Low, even though it was on a low budget. But still, it was great. It was great. Budget. <laughs> I absolutely. Um, so... Yeah, I'm a big fan of these movies, so I'm a little biased, of course. Christopher Lee is one of my favorite actors. Again, a little biased. Sorry. No, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher Lee should be everybody's favorite actor. I'm sorry. <laughs> he should be at the tops of everybody's list. He's in so many. He's done, He's got so many uh, roles that everybody has seen. Everybody has probably seen at least one movie Christopher Lee has been in. That's how many movies he's been in. I mean, he's in Star Wars. He's in Lord of the Rings. Okay. Yeah. He was in a Gremlins movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was in James <laughs> Bond. I mean, come on. Yes, he was in James Bond. He he knew uh he he knew how to get into that stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't checked these out because uh you think they're too old and I'm gonna do this, Brandon. And you know why? Because you're not here and you can't smack me. <laughs> if you think this movie is uh, old and long in the tooth <laughs> um, and that means you won't watch it well you need to check this out and watch it 
Well, you know what, Joe? I don't know because since now movies are down there two hours long now. Wait, wait, wait. That's really short. You mean movies are now two hours and 45 minutes long, and that's not including the trailers if you go to the theater to see it. You're right. I am so wrong. You're right. Yeah, you need to apologize to everybody. (laughs) Audience, I didn't mean that. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Okay, so... uh... Uh, we haven't decided on the next track of the movie we're going to do, but it will be one that is telling the story of the novel. And uh, Brandon, uh, we got your final thoughts. I know we've been going on tangents, and I just want to make sure. Yeah, we got yeah final thoughts. It was a great movie. I loved it. All right, all right, all right. So uh, we'll see you next time. Later, guys. 